Welcome. I'm Mars Silans, uh, CEO of InfoTrust in Latvia. End of March, you probably uh, participated in SAP talk and show event where our customer, Luminor Bank, uh, explained and shared their story how they implemented and how they're using SAP profitability and performance management solution. Uh, Yuris Marsans explained how they gained transparency of the costs uh, to get insight into product and service profitability. And today uh, we have arranged this webinar to follow up and to provide more insights, uh, explaining how the solution works and to demonstrate it for you. And I'm happy to present our team today. Uh, myself, I will shortly explain why the APM is a game changer for finance and controlling departments. After my colleague Domas Ornetskis will guide you through solution demo. And finally, uh, as use case of PAPM are not limited just uh, for activity based costing, our partner uh, company MSG Global, Marcus Fogel, will present other useful use cases and customer case studies from various industries. All of us also will be here for your questions uh, to answer them. And you can ask them using Q and A box uh, on that uh, when you when you in the Zoom, and also when we will open Q and A session, uh, you will have a chance to raise your hand and ask the question using the microphone. Um, so uh, all the questions are very 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 welcome from your side, and we will we have dedicated team to cover cover them during today's session. And. Uh, uh, for brief introduction, uh, Marcus, uh, can you quickly tell our audience about MSG Global? Yes, Maris, uh, thank you very much. So my name is Marcus Vogel, like uh, Maris mentioned already, and I come from the MSG group, in specific from the MSG Global Solutions Company. We are a part of the MSG group, the MSG group itself was founded in 1980 by Mr. Hans Zedmeier. And in the meanwhile, we have branches, subsidiaries in more than 28 countries, a revenue of 1.3 billion euro and over uh, 8,500 employees. Like you see beneath, we have a strong market focus on insurance, banking, automotive sector, but all the others as well. And the global organization, which is located in 21 countries around the world, was founded in 2008, has uh, 125 million revenue last year and over 1,000 employees. We as MSG Global, Maris, can you uh, move to the next slide, please? We as the MSG uh, Group are uh, a partner for the SAP since more than 30 years of um, developing some applications by ourselves for ourselves and also applications for uh, MS, uh, for SAP as an extended work, workbench. And uh, the last development of these both companies has been the in the meanwhile very successful application SAP PAPM. By the way, but not least, we are rewarded as um, a Pinnacle Award winner in 2019 and be nominated for the Pinnacle Award in 2020 for both for the on-prem uh, solution as well as for a cloud solution. So that's for now from my side about MSG. Thank you, Maris. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, let me share also uh, some exciting news from our side. Uh, a brief moment uh, that uh, last month we finalized merger with our long-term partner in Lithuania, the Q. Uh, so InfoTrust is, is, is getting bigger uh, and the merger was done to form a leading data analytics uh, company in the Baltics uh, with the goal to help enterprise level company both in the Baltics and abroad to use data for informed decision-making. And uh, one of our customers is, is uh, as I mentioned before, Luminor and uh, uh, to quickly summarize talk and show uh, event what Yuris uh, Masans told uh, the gains of Luminor Bank using PAPM was uh, to achieve transparency of the costs and also transfer pricing and the business now 
can ask questions like how profitable are my products and uh, what is the cost of my customer and what are main cost components uh, of each product uh, and how to price a customer to cover up all the relevant costs associated with the product uh, uh, products this customer is, is uh, using and consuming. So all of that is, is important because uh, profit and long-term sustainability are one of the most, if the not most important KPI for any company and uh, to measure any any business idea, any business plan in the uh, delivery. But uh, uh, once you want to get the numbers, often finance uh, and, and controlling teams are facing some challenges. Like for example, the data is available in the systems, but it is not easy to drive conclusions due to inflexible either uh, the, uh, data gathering process or inflexible reporting. Sometimes also existing solutions might be slow performing, and especially when you have to create complex calculation models, and especially if you want to add all the required detailed dimensions on the very granular data levels. So the result often is that finance people are spending more time on data preparation than analyzing or modeling, uh, modeling uh, cost allocations. So there is need often to also invent uh, some assumptions or many assumptions uh, which might lead also in, in wrong decisions. Uh, in, in general, goal of PAPM is to help business users to address these challenges with minimal IT involvement. So it's, it, it is the tool created for business to overcome these challenges. And uh, how it's done? First, uh, as your business is unique and, and most of, often also your business processes are quite unique, and PAPM provides some pre-built scenarios. You can take a look at the best practices, but you can build the, uh, these scenarios from scratch. Uh, but most importantly, this process uh, can be changed as your business is changing and evolving. And in this process, you can uh, add, gather all the data related to cost information of every process and how how these processes then are related to final products and services. And we included SAP HANA high performance uh, database. It allows to perform real time calculations on large data volumes uh, to gain immediate insights uh, about, about costs and products and make simulations. So uh, before, before the demo, uh, the Quick, quick overview of what are the main of, of what are the main components of PAPM. So first, at first, uh, there is business data aggregator, which helps to collect data from any system or data warehouse uh, you, your organization has. So it could be data warehouse, it can be any uh, different systems, including SAP, but any other system as well. And uh, once the data is available, it's it's gathered. Uh, it has modeling and calculation engine. With that engine, you can implement different uh, scenarios to run complex calculations and complex simulations based on this data. And uh, so, and this data is, is quite similar and it can be used for uh, tasks like uh, activity-based costing or compliance and risk, transfer pricing, cash flow modeling, another use case about which Domus uh, will show how it works and Marcus will explain about these different use cases and, and customer examples. So with that, uh, my, I, I hand over stage to you Domus for, for the demo of the solution because it's better to see it with your, your eyes. <clears throat> yeah, uh, thank you, Marius. Uh, can you hear me well, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, good morning, everyone. I'm Domas Oranetskas. I'm working with uh, profitability solutions uh, for 14 years now. And uh, today, as Marius told, I'll show you the user interface and a quick uh, like walkthrough through the solution because it's you know, easy to get a better understanding when you can see it 
uh, how it works live and it's not just uh, some extra abstract uh, capability descriptions. Let me share my screen. Yes, so um, this is a new user interface as we call it. So uh, it's, uh, it's a bit interesting because uh, PAPM currently has two user interface, the expert UI as we call it for that most experts are working with and the new UI, which has the same, sometimes even more capabilities, uh, but it's not yet maybe popular, but I think going forward, it might, might be more popular, but uh, yeah, so, as you can see, it's much, it's quite clear visually and uh, uh, comparing to the old one, it's much better, much better to work here. So um, what I'm about to show you is uh, like a example model, uh, a few words about that. So basically when you, uh, you're you getting, your company is getting this PAPM solution, you will get a whole set of example models, which we are calling sample content. So I think that it's around 40 of them that you'll get now, and they're really tailored to different industries and different use cases. So quite likely that you can find one that is relevant to you. And it's like an example how you could build uh, the model yourself. You can of course use it and copy it and adjust it, or you can create from scratch a new model and just uh, look, look at it how this might be done. Um, so, what do you see here? Uh, so, um, one icon in the screen is, is, is like a function, and a function is like one data transformation step, if we can call it, is simplified. It. So, you can easily uh, expand or contract these different groups of functions, and uh, I will walk you through this simple, quite simple example model here. Here I've chosen uh, profitability and cost management of chemicals manufacturing, but uh, it's independent on what your area is. You, you can find it for, for, your, uh, for your industry. Uh, so usually uh, we start with integrate data sources. So here you have just a list of input data. Uh, here we have just the tables with the, in, in this example model is just a table with some data inputted, but usually you can plug in to any data source, uh, SAP or non-SAP at your company, and then you can access it live. So it has a live connection. It doesn't need to replicate the data in, in, the, in its own database. And uh, next we have, uh, we have data review and update where you can uh, update the data if, if needed and make some amendments to it. Uh, and then we have a processing part, which is uh, kind of where the real um, power of uh, PAPM is, is happening. So here we have a number of different functions which do the real data transformation. And PAPM has uh, a lot of them. Uh, I think it's around 20 types of different functions. So for example, allocation, calculation, evaluation, machine learning, and so on. And also it's very easy to drag a new function. For example, you can just add it here. And uh, yeah, if you want, you can already connect it to this and define it. Uh, so for example, as just a simple example, in, in our case, we have union. Uh, of uh, GL and plan and forecast data. So what did this function does is just connect two tables. And in this new UI, we can clearly see uh, which, um, which tables are used. If I click this, I can clearly see that these two arrows going from these two tables are going to this function. And then this function is used in the next function assign resources. Next we have a uh, assignment function or allocation function, which is one of the most popular functions in, in, uh, in PAPM. And it just basically takes the source data, uh, which you want to allocate, take the driver data, or receiver as we call it, and then do does the allocation. What's also easy in PAPM, and it's a very good thing comparing to, to a different other solutions, is that every function has a table behind it. It means that you can very easily understand what this function is doing. So basically you can click on the function and then click here and yes, and you see the table 
table uh, behind it. Uh, let me drag it. Yeah. Uh, and similarly, after after the allocation, you just click it and you see the table, the results, which after the, the, the allocation has been done. So we can very easily check and understand and see if this what you expect uh, from this data transformation. So, um, yes, yeah, so we're going down the flow after everything. Uh, it's what needs to be done is allocated. Then we have a reporting part. Uh, usually. Uh, most of the clients are exporting data to the I don't know, BW or data warehouse uh, to do the reporting in different solutions, but BAPM is also capable of uh, their own reporting. Of course, uh, besides the simple tables that you can have a look, I will show you the thing that we're calling qualitative report, which is also a new functionality, which has a um, quite a nice report integrated in the BAPM. Before that, I wanted to talk with you about the kind of processing part. So PPM has also quite strong workflow functionality. It means you can create process, processes with deadlines, with start and end dates, then assign uh, people responsible for those processes, then they can, the status of, of processes can be changed, this, uh, they can be approved or not, and so on. So this is also, um, very useful if you have a larger company and then you need to clearly define the responsibilities who's doing what on, on profitability area and the reporting. So on the reporting part, so uh, this is the qualitative report that we're calling it. So as you can see, you can define the report, uh, whatever, how, you, how do you want it to be? It means in this case, the text is uh, static, but everything else is kind of dynamic. You can have uh, tables, you can have uh, maps with uh, graphs on them. Uh, you, uh, yeah, it, it, it's kind of automatically produced. If you have some data with location dimension, it can be put, put on the map. Um, also, there's a quite a strong drill down uh, capabilities. For example, if you want to understand what uh, high salary is this consisting of, you can see inspection, maintenance, packaging, and you can go deeper and back. So it's easy to do the analysis. Also, you can do uh, the um, simulation here. Uh, yeah, you can change some, uh, you can configure the report that you can input the, the parameters and then run the calculation to have a look at that. Um, okay, uh, let's have a look. What I think that's that's about it. Uh, I can quickly show you. This is the expert UI, but uh, so if you will see sometimes, uh, yeah, somewhere that that's the same PPM. If you can see, you have the, absolutely the same groups of uh, um, functions and the functions themselves. This is only this is the the view is totally different, but all the configurations capabilities are the same. So I think that would be it from my side. This was a very quick overview uh, uh, through PAPM. And uh, yeah, in my experience, this is really, uh, clients really like PAPM because of their flexibility and clarity that you can trace back the steps very easily. Also, it's very, very flexible and you can configure with step-by-step step using a lot, uh, different functions, you can quite quite intuitively uh, do whatever transformation you want. And in some other solutions, you need to do, learn a lot of scripting, for example, to do what you want. But here it's just, you drag another function and you pull the data and you output the data. So that would be it from my side. Thank uh, you. Thomas, maybe you have any example of uh, mm -hmm. value flow chart chart? Uh, yes, I think I just quickly, uh, yeah, track it. So, yeah, this is one of the chart that is very liked by uh, by the clients. Um, it's just a nice example how uh, PPM um, shows the value flowing, and you can of, of course configure whatever dimensions you want uh, it to have, and it, you can easily trace back where how the costs are flowing basically from from which uh, entities in which dimensions uh, and where to at the end yeah thanks Thomas so yeah thank you Mark mm -hmm. as, as we are uh, relatively um, 
small group to, in today's event. Uh, if you have any question, uh, please ask in the chat box and Thomas can show something in particular right now or after. But I think uh, now it's time for Marcus to go to explain and show a couple of uh, interesting case studies uh, of PPM and, and different use cases to help you understand that uh, the application of a PPM can be used equally well in profitability area as well as, as in, in others like sustainability and cash flow, modeling and planning, uh, risk uh, compliance management, tax management for with, with uh, transfer pricing. Uh, so, Dom, Marcus. Thank you, Maurice. So, stage is yours. Let me share my screen. Yes, every one of you see my screen right now. It's a starting screen of my presentation yes. with content packages. Yes. So, uh, like uh, Thomas mentioned during his uh, nice presentation of the application itself, PAPM has some uh, or a lot of so-called standard functions. This means uh, these standard functions where no pro programming is required will be assembled to create these content packages you see here. In the meanwhile, we have created more than 50 uh, different kind of content packages. And like I said, it's a combination of all these standard functions available in SAP PAPM. So let's start with the first one on the left-hand upper side. It's the profitability and cost management. This is the basis where also the application comes from when it was launched in 2014, 2015. PAPM itself was developed from a financial services perspective with one of the largest customers, uh, the application or uh, the license we are sold to in the past, it's Samsung in Korea. And the challenge they have had in that time is that they have a huge number of data they have to deal with. They have more than 6.5 billion records per month. They have to deal with and to work with to analyze it and they have more than 400 KPIs to calculate, to, to get the information they need or to try to get the information they need, but due to the limited capabilities of an existing system in that time, they do not reach the lowest level. This means they do not have the chance to analyze, this, uh, to analyze the customer or the contract profitability. This is what I forget to mention. We not talk about Samsung Electronics. We saw, talk about Samsung Insurance, but the company is huge as well. <laughs> so, and uh, they ask SAP because Samsung has been an SAP shop in that time and still for uh, still now to help them to find a solution which can uh, which where they can achieve what they are aiming on. And in that time, House of Blattner has had this fantastic idea with SAP HANA. This is where PAPM based on, on pure SAP HANA technology. And uh, by our reputation, MSG Global Rep, or MSG reputation in the Asian market, and especially in the insurance industry, and as a long proven partner of SAP, like I mentioned during my introduction, they asked us to support this project and successfully launched in 2015, not only the application as well, uh, Samsung went live in that time. And right now they have the insights to steer and control the business much better than they have done it before. After a couple of months, SAP come to the idea also to offer this controlling specific business driven application to other industries. At the beginning, the application itself was named FSPER. This means financial services performance analysis um, application and it lead some non-financial services institutes um, into confusion because they thought about what should we do with an application made and designed for the financial services industry. In the next slide, I will tell you the success story. And then SAP decide to open themselves, open the application and rebrand it 
with SAP profitability and performance management to get away a little from the, the first impression you can get if you read financial services application. A clear statement, PAPM is a business application made for all industries because each and everyone do have, or I thought each and everyone should have a controlling department, well working controlling department on one hand to control the organization, check the KPIs, but on the other hand, also improve the processes as well in case of cost optimization and so on. So the next step, and this is also something we implemented in, uh, in the environment of several customers, is the plan and forecast modeling use case in combination with SAP uh, with the profitability and cost management use case you can think about driver based cost ma uh, management models this means you start planning and allocate the limited budget resources to the profitability drivers in your organization and then by the limited capabilities, you can steer and control the, uh, the flow of, like say, of your production process. As the next step, most of the companies add the use case operational transfer pricing. And finally, at the end of this chain, they come to the idea to start with uh, text calculation and reporting. And this combination at least gives you a very powerful tool to get more insights, more transparency of your uh, company, of your production process, of your profitability, as well as on your cost side. And this is the aim of this analytical application to get based on the available data in your organization. And I think most of you have a huge number of data they have, but the challenge is to use the data in the best possible way to get the information required to bring you one step ahead of your competition. And this is why the companies, and later on we get some examples of this, use PAPM for them advantage. You see also here some industry specific use cases, still some industry specific use cases, for instance, like funds and liquidity transfer pricing for the banking industry and some others. One of the, uh, the newest uh, development is uh, something around uh, value chain sustainability management. We talk about, if we talk about sustainability management, uh, first of all about corporate sustainability management. This means the companies itself uh, elaborate what then carbon footprint is. This means what then greenhouse gas emission is. And then by using the analysis capabilities of PAPM, they try by implementing different kinds of methods to lower their carbon footprint step by step in accordance to the EU taxonomy. And some of you, I guess, have heard about what EU taxonomy is. And furthermore, uses PAPM also as a reporting tool to fulfill the requirements of the ESG reporting on one hand, as long as they are not uh, need to report this as a free will report, as an attachment to them uh, annual balance sheet. And later on, I guess uh, some companies need to have to do it and it will become some kind of legal reporting. But in this specific case, PFM can support you as well. On premise, we also talk about uh, product sustainability management. This means uh, we uh, have a look at the entire um, supply chain and value chain of the organization and uh, calculate what the product carbon footprint is. And similar to what you can do with your company carbon footprint, you can elaborate what kind of methods you can implement to lower the carbon footprint of your product. In the cloud, uh, PAPM is also available in the cloud. It's not uh, yet on the price list of SAP, but um, we think about that the launch of these news, or this news will be launched in June, that the SAP sellers can all uh, also sell PAPM in a cloud. Uh, PAPM should be a part of an SAP development of an SAP product 
to calculate the product carbon footprint in the cloud by using this CSRS development. So let's have a, oh, sorry. Let's have an overview of uh, the use cases of the industry specific use cases implemented so far. You not need to go necessarily into the detail. I will tell you what you see here in these uh, small, uh, what is written here in these small letters and we'll summarize it. Like uh, I mentioned, you see that in the meanwhile, PAPM is not only at home in the banking or, or in the insurance industry anymore. A lot of other industries uh, have seen the value they can generate by using PAPM. For instance, the airline industry, the retail industry, this is the industry which currently comes with the most requests to our table. They want to evaluate uh, the product profitability. This means what the different kind of stores do have in them rack, how profitable is it? They will analyze them, uh, uh, then um, downstream process, this means uh, how effective, how cost if, uh, efficient is it to deliver a good from A to B from the producer till it's in the market. And many, many others like the chemical industry, the railway uh, railways, and what is also very popular is the uh, PAPM for the oil and gas industry, not also in the Middle East, or, uh, as well as in South America and in Asia, in the telecom industry. We currently have some requests from the telecom industry from the big uh, companies here in Germany, also uh, from a company in Great Britain, I guess everyone know who I'm going to talk about. So these are some industry examples. And like I said, most of the companies start with profitability and cost management. You have seen in the slide before many, many options where you can use PAPM for, but the first step is to get a better understanding of the cost portions, like you have seen in the Sankey diagram, Thomas has shown you. And on the other hand, how profitable each product is to steer and control the limited budget, for instance, by using the driver-based cost management approach. So here um, is an, just give me a second. So here again, an overview of the main use cases we implemented so far. <coughs> this means <coughs> uh, MSG, it's not only the company, the extended work, workbench of SAP for the application SAP PAPM. We act also at the market in the, these 28 uh, countries and also all the others where we do not have subsidiaries as an integration and implementation partner or as a partner for InfoTrust and other companies. So the profitability use case, like I said, is currently the most common use case. Isn't everyone start with them? And then they go deeper into the detail. They do bill of material simulations. Also one of the strengths of PAPM to do some simulations, use what if scenarios uh, to imagine what can happen. If for instance, the market demand increase or decrease, what does it mean for my production line, for my costs, for my profitability? and so on and so on. They have a deep look into them, uh, supply chain to optimize this from different kinds of uh, perspectives, like I said, from a cost perspective, as well as for a sustainable perspective. They do a process cost analysis by using PAPM. This is the activity-based serving cost approach, like most of the companies follow when they implement profitability and performance management, the first use case. Cost to serve is another one, like distribution and logistic for the retail industry, but also for the mining companies. This is some of the most common use cases, like I said, in these mining companies, but also in the oil and gas industry, nearly in every industry, which has to bridge a huge distance between the origin of the production and the customer itself. If you think about China, I guess this would be very useful for companies in China if they have to ship them goods from China, from Asia to Europe. 
operational transfer pricing in combination with tax is also something which is uh, pretty interesting because operational transfer pricing or the transfer price itself is limited by the OECD regulations, by the BEPS. And you need to know which kind of markup you can use to transfer a good from company A to company B without exceeding what is allowed by, o, uh, by the OECD uh, requirement, uh, by the OECD requirements. And on the other hand, you can uh, uh, calculate what the impact of changing transfer prices uh, is on your tax balance sheet. Then you have many, many other use cases, but in general, it's an application, like I said, to analyze your mass of data, your data lake in the best possible way and, and make, you, make these KPIs available. You need to steer and control your company in the best way. So finally, I want to give you some examples of customer use cases. This means how do they start and why do they use PAPM? So Google, around about two years ago, was moving from Oracle to SAP. So this is some use case. PAPM also contributes for, uh, for when the companies start a financial transformation. And one of the challenges uh, Google faced in that time was they couldn't determine what the costs of the products and the service they sell is, and this is one of the, the most critical issue you have in the company. If you make, even if you make billions, billions of dollars, then you need to know where your profit exactly comes from and where your costs go to. If the market is getting tighter and tighter and tighter and your margin will shrink, you can imagine how important it is to get exactly the details. And maybe you come to the conclusion that you will stop some product line or whatsoever to avoid the risk to get less profitable, profitable or even lose money. And as early as you know this, and you can use a PAPM report for each and every time, because if you have a very, uh, if you have an HANA box beneath, and use the calculation capabilities, then you can get the result into seconds, maybe some minutes, and then you get a full transparency where your organization currently stay, how profitable it is, or where they lose money. And this is why Google also start with the use case profitability and cost management to analyze at least the product and service costs. Another thing is, and this is uh, can be fixed by PAPM due to its outstanding integrability uh, 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 capabilities, that the data at Google has been divided over three different systems. And the integration of the data and to harmonize this data coming from different kind of system, uh, from different systems are also one of the major challenges ITs or let's say divided IT landscapes do have nowadays. This means also caused by the inhomogeneous IT landscape. It was nearly unable to, um, to analyze which cost portions go to which product and which services. So, and this problem can be fixed by using PAPM and the standard HANA capabilities to integrate data in the different kind of tables like you have seen um, during what Thomas or during the product presentation of Thomas, you use the SDA, SDI, Smart Data Integrator, Smart Data Access to pull the data from the different kind of data sources. And this was at least the solution for some of the challenges from the controlling perspective Google has had. Another pretty good example, and it underlines what I said about tighter markets, is Cardinal Health. They've had a quite similar challenge. They want to know exactly the profitability on a product and service level. And in the US, 
some of you might know Cardinal Health or have heard it before, is a very strong competition between these companies because finally you can earn a lot of money in this sector, in the pharma and medical sector. But due to this huge challenge of 16 competitors in this market who fight for each and every market segment, the profitability shrink. And if you do not have the required insights, similar to Google, but like I said, the margins are much lower here in this sector, you can, lo you can lose money. Even if you have a revenue of 137 billion uh, US dollar, and this is definitely a lot, but by a margin from one to 2%, you have to calculate very in a very accurate way and in, in a very exact way too. And this is why Cardinal Health finally, after they get convinced by PFPM, replace the applications they have had in use before. It has been SAS and S, uh, sub COPA, COPA. So we talk also about from a marketing perspective, but this is less interesting for you, that um, PFPM replaces the PA of COPA because COPA is somewhere, however, very limited compared with PAPM and the capabilities of PAPM gives you a much deeper insight into your data. It's much faster than the old COPA application. And like I said, it helps you to get the necessary information about profitability and cost analysis. Let me come to Deutsche Bank as the third example. I have been a part of this implementation project from a sales perspective, and also from a consulting perspective, I work with my colleagues in this project. So Deutsche Bank decided to reorganize on, or to harmonize them existing IT landscape on one hand. And with this step, similar to Google, what Google has done, they want to replace the existing tools uh, to calculate the profitability and performance, uh, performance of the organization. And on the other hand, to support the planning process by a more uh, modern application. And when we talk about uh, modernize the process means also move away from purely technical driven applications to business oriented applications like uh, PAPM is. And then they start this journey together with another implementation partner, um, which uh, comes more from the functional side and we from MSG Global who comes from the implementation from the technical oriented side to implement at least five different driver-based cost models. And based on this, they steer and control and they plan uh, how to allocate the budget to the allocation drivers and integrate PAPM with PAPM in their organization. The entire project or uh, duration due to also the complexity of the content we do have to implement was around 10 months from the beginning till the go live. This is not a really long period compared with other uh, projects where you have to do some more uh, programming stuff. This is also some advantage which hasn't been mentioned yet. So due to the given functions by PAPM, we not talk about programming anymore. We talk about assembling or configuring the application. And this enables us to implement such a content we implement at Deutsche Bank in compared to other projects in a very short time of around 10 months. Compared to that, we have implemented PAPM with the topic funds transfer pricing. It's a bank, you know, like I mentioned uh, during the introduction of the content and activity in a simple activity-based cost model. This means we've implemented two use cases in less than five months for a bank in mid-America. And this also gives you a pretty good example that, uh, that it means to use PAPM or to choose PAPM, selected PAPM, uh, 
means not only endless project implementation times before you can get a return on investment after let's say a period of six to nine months you get a very clear picture of uh, where your company in case for instance in profitability and cost management stay and what they can achieve where do they have to optimize the same processes and cost structure and so on so that you can start in the new fiscal year let's say with a little more innovative and modern application so this is it finally from my side about the short introduction of some use cases. I have many, many other use cases in mind, not only here from a profitability and cost management perspective. We have also a lot of market requests to the topic sustainability management to decarbonize the organizations, how to do and how to help. This is, like I said, a very, very famous topic and it becomes more and more attention to this topic. Uh, from the market side and yeah, maybe some one day in the near future, I will have the chance together with my colleagues, Maris and Domas, to introduce UPAPM and elaborate a little more individual approach. This means what you can do in your organization with PAPM related to your business. Thank you so far. Thanks, Marcus. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I believe uh, this was also our experience with, with Luminor project that uh, it took uh, around uh, seven months to implement the solution. But I think that really the, the one of the benefits, in my opinion, about the solution is is that once you see uh, all the costs associated with the, with the, with the uh, processes and and how they impact the price or cost of, uh, of, of companies, services or products, uh, it, it is actually not, then the ability to, for organization to review uh, how efficient we are, uh, how to compare for costs between different departments or between different countries and see the, the, where the difference come from, why, uh, for example, legal service in one country is much higher than in other or vice versa cheaper. And then it's it's a potential for these companies to understand what drives the costs uh, of, of the products and then review the processes and, and, and look from the uh, business optimization side, what can we do to improve our process to make them more efficient and, and that will enable to improve the profitability or to become more uh, competitive in the market with, with, with the ability to provide lower prices, uh, but still with a, uh, enough good profits to be sustainable also from financial perspective. I think uh, this, this uh, business change is, is, is one of the key aspects of, of the solution. And moreover, uh, it's, it's not hard coded. Uh, so it, it's, of course, the organizations are very uh, live uh, organisms uh, that are changing. And, and once you change, you have to also adapt these changes to, to, to the way how you uh, calculate or uh, associate the costs within these process. But uh, yeah, we are uh, right on time to, for our Q and A session. And, and if if there are any 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 questions, then then there is two options. How to ask the questions is one: you can raise your hand, and will I will unmute you, and you can talk uh, to me, to Domus, to Marcus, uh, or you can also write the question and in Q&A panel, and then, then I will read the question to our, our, our uh, presenters. So why, why we are, why the questions are coming up or, or why, why, do, why, do, why those are um, pre prepared, Marcus? Maybe maybe you can uh, <clears throat> uh, name a project that was the quickest one. You are talking about six to nine months. That have been have been there any 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 quick win project uh, delivered sooner than that. Yeah, the, the quickest one is uh, the one I mentioned in uh, South or Mid America, 
to implement uh, two different use cases in less than five months. And this was uh, outst outstanding fast. But um, this means uh, this is the duration of the pure implementation time. This doesn't mean that we have to create a, a functional concept. This needs to be given. We cannot start with a functional concept and then do the implementation in between five months. This is uh, something really challenging and I think maybe not possible. But uh, when we talk, for instance, about uh, POC, and Thomas knows this as well as I do, is we talk about if we have a limited number of data, about two weeks preparation time so that you can see as a customer based on your individual data, uh, what you can get if you implement PAPM. And like I said, it could be done in between two weeks if uh, there's a limited functionality or analysis capabilities you cannot implement in between two weeks, all your uh, algorithms you've implemented in your existing landscape for your KPIs but as a snapshot of what you did so far, there might be a chance to, like I said, to start with a, a small POC and some of our customers later on do use this POC as a basis for the later greater implementation project. Mm -hmm. This would be an option. Uh, I, mem I remember I was part also of, of a Luminar project. It was the, the case also there that uh, uh, we, there was sample data provided to prepare POC, uh, which we prepared, I think, in a, in a, in a week or two times, a week, two weeks time, uh, to showcase all the, all the required use cases of, of, the, of, this, of the solution. And I think in a, uh, uh, any, any of, of today's participants, uh, if, if you are interested in some of the uh, POCs for, for your company and for you, your use case, uh, we open to to discuss that and, and to uh, spend our time uh, on on discussions with you about uh, how profitability and profit uh, and performance management solution can help uh, for your organization. And either we can take a look at one of the examples for uh, sample content uh, related or similar to your industry, or find a similar customer in this in the same industry as as you are or also uh, engage with you on more deep, deeper level on, on preparing POC, the proof of concept for profitability solution um, based on the, your, your data uh, and your cost, cost objects and, and your business process to, to draw them in, in, in the solution. All right. Um, I believe uh, for the for the moment, uh, if they are Aris, no other... a question in the chat. Okay, perfect. Uh, and then. Uh, Can, uh, can you? Uh... Yeah, for sure. Uh, the question is, what is the most challenging part of implementing PAPM and PPC to a company with multiple systems, not SAP, covering different business processes? Thomas, would you like to answer this question? Yeah, I'm well, thinking now that uh... Uh, it's, it's a bit hard to say. On, uh, the uh, the kind the question is like, what is the most challenging part? So, I guess to do the re correct preparation, maybe for maybe I could put it this way, because uh, um, PAPM of course can do everything quite easily, but uh, uh, from my experience, maybe this. Um, integration part needs to be well thought out and uh, uh, kind of these IT related questions need to be answered on how the these data flows would be all the accesses and access rights and all that uh, might be more complicated and it might take some unexpected time I would say uh, 
yeah, it's it's a bit hard question because if you if you do everything right, there are no really challenging uh, parts there, and uh, uh, because PAPM is designed to be connected to different systems. So, uh, but uh, but yeah, I would say that this integration part in this case might be from from my experience a bit more more challenging. Oh, and this is definitely something, thank you, Thomas. I don't want to challenge you. I, I have this example already from Deutsche Bank and have the knowledge about this project and I can, exact, uh, can confirm what you've said already. The integration part, uh, this means the, uh, the interfa interfacing with the different kind of systems uh, is the, the most challenging part. Everything else um, beside the topic, um, what is it? user access rights to the application. This is, let's say, normal stuff. I don't want to underestimate because I don't know your landscape. I talked to the person who asked this question. I don't know your landscape and how fragmented it is, how many systems you have to adopt and from where do you have to fetch the data. But from a technical perspective, it's normal project work. Um, Another challenge, but this is something you have to solve before you start the project, is uh, to evaluate the driver based, for instance, at Deutsche Bank, to evaluate what are the best, this means the best fit to your business driver based cost models. But this is something you have to do on the functional side. And as soon as this work is done, the implementation from our perspective is, like I said, it's some kind of a routine. Routine does not mean that we not um, keep an eye on each and everything. And we do not have quality assurance because we have so much routine. This is something we definitely have and we have to be very careful with each and everything we do during a project life cycle. But based on our experience and in the meanwhile, we have uh, had uh, be, or we have been a part in more than 50 PAPM implementation projects worldwide. And we are the company with uh, definitely the most experience worldwide in implementing PAPM. We don't see a huge challenge. The challenges sometimes come, and if I talk in general about challenges in projects, about complexity of the models customer use, hierarchy structures. Deutsche Bank has a very ambitious hierarchy uh, concept. They have had 16 hierarchies where you have to drill down from the company level, or which you have to consider from a company level till the product level. And this causes, if you allocate costs over these 16 levels, a lot of um, calculation or this need, a lot of calculation capabilities. This means the challenge in this specific case was the performance, but as long as you do have the infrastructure, the required infrastructure, this means a HANA box with enough in-memory capability or capacities, you not need to be worried about. Like I said, Samsung, they have had and I can send you this um, example by Maris Anonymized. They have more than 6.5 billion records per month. And this is really a huge mess. And they fix this problem when they have bought or they have fixed this problem by buying the hugest available HANA box. And then number of data, number of iteration steps, number of... Uh, lines in the contribution margin schema are not an issue anymore. Technically, you can fix it, but you need exactly to know what to do, how to do, and how to deal with the application. Also for, for um, the topic of performance optimization during the single kind of calculation steps, and then job is done. Thanks, thanks, Marcus. Uh... And, and Thomas for, for the answer. Uh, Thomas, I, I hope uh, we got you, you covered uh, with, the, with the answer. And uh, I can uh, amend only on the, on the data aggregation side that it's also uh, compared with uh, more technical tools like SAP data services or Informatica or other ETL tools. 
business data aggregator it's it's what it, it's it's called business data aggregator so it uh, it's also possible for business user to, to aggregate uh, different data source, including uh, Excel files, for example, which are typically used in, in POC examples. Uh, in Numenor Bank, we, for example, we used also sources like Jira system to get the timing information about how much time people are spending on certain tasks. So there are, there are a lot of uh, possibilities for, for uh, data aggregation. And uh, once you have this data available, you can use these different uh, uh, use case scenarios for both cost allocation, sustainability, CO2 emission calculations, risk, etc., etc., et and, and the simulations. Uh, I, I think we have reached our time time limit, but uh, I, the goal for today was to follow up uh, initial luminous success story we shared with you in in March. And to provide a bit more insight about the, what's under the hood of the solution, what, what, what Domus told, and explain a bit uh, how the solution works and, and the use cases that, that Marcus presented. Uh, uh, I will share with all of you our, our uh, materials today that we, that we, we showed you. Also, recording will be available uh, for, for, for you and for other participants who, who decided to watch it afterwards. And uh, of course, uh, if there are more questions, uh, we are more than welcome to having uh, discussions with you on one-to-one -one basis to uh, get insights in, about your situation, your questions, and uh, we'll be pleased to help helping you with, with the profitability challenges. With that, I, I thank you for, for the attention, for the, for the questions, and wish you a very pleasant day afterwards. Marcus Domas, uh, also my marketing colleague, Lina, in the, in the background. Thank you for organizing this event. Thank you. Welcome, Aris. My pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Good